Hello again, welcome to another edition of the Real Ale Guide. Right, we're doing the last beer now from Charles Dunn, who sent me the beers in the post. Uh, many, many thanks to Charles for sending. Now, I've kept the best to last, or the strongest to last, because this beer has been brewed for the Arctic conditions. Can you believe that? Okay, so this is North Cotswolds Brewery. It's their special brew. And it's the Arctic Global Warmer, 15% ABV. I really want this to focus so I can jerk, there you go. There's the compass in the middle. And there you go, look at that, 15%. North Cotswolds Brewery. And it goes off, I think in December, 2015. So basically, 15%. <laughs> how cold you are, it's going to warm you up. This beer is going to hit you in the stomach and it's really going to give you a big warming sensation. I think that's the whole idea of this beer. Now, it's a dark imperial stout. Easily, easily, probably by 5% stronger than any Imperial Stout I have ever drunk. I have drunk, I think, Dark Stars Imperial Stout, which was 10%. We did a few American Imperials, which I'm not sure what the old Rasputin was. I think that may have been 10 or 11%. 9.7, I believe. But this, this is, poor. Oh, this is, and it's a real ale as well. The camera says it's a real ale. There you go. So 15%, no more chatter chatter. It's normal black cap. Let's get this beer open with a BB bar fly. Wow, that flew off. I smashed my little old beer, nice Belgium glass, smashed it in the dishwasher. So we we got the Great British Beer and Cider Festival. I'm trying to create a head here. Great British Beer and Cider Festival glass we're using today. Right. For 15%, it looked. I'm getting aromas here. I'm cherry. All the way from here, I'm cherry. You're not really going to get much of a head off a beer 15% ABV. It has disappeared rapidly. Let's get the nose. You're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this until I tell you. Coca-Cola. Cherry Coca-Cola, that smells like. Mixed in with roasted malts. Some brown, most definitely brown sugar again in this one. There's licorice. Coffee and caramel. How's that for a nose? Right, the anticipation is over. Let's get into this drink. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, oh. That is the most peculiar thing I've ever drunk in my life. It's got a certain medicine appeal about it. It's almost like you laid up ill in bed and your kind wife or girlfriend comes and brings you a, a spoonful of 
something to clear up your cold or something. As you imagine, it is very, very thick, but very, it's followed very, very quickly by the brown sugar and the licorice. But the initial thing is still, even after the nose, is still cherry Coca-Cola. And then it gets quickly swept away by the roastedness of this beer, the brown sugar is predominantly licorice. I think that's why I'm... licorice is such a big flavour to mask over other flavours that I think that's why I, my initial thoughts were of uh, a medicine. Because it masks all of the real things that are going on with we're trying to fix you up. But this, I'm trying to imagine myself with a big beard, a big thick bobble hat on, and being in an expedition up to the Arctic, being absolutely freezing cold, and having perhaps a mug full of this. And I'm kind of thinking, you drink it like this, I imagine. You'd be freezing cold, and that warms you right. It, you can feel it going down your throat, into your stomach. It really does do the job of warming you up. The thing with it is, and it's a big thing, I've never liked licorice. I've never liked licorice. If you love licorice, it's almost like eating bassets, licorice, all sorts. The licorice, the black licorice. It's that same flavour mixed with cherry Coca-Cola. It's such a strange, strange, but pardon me, feel to this drink. But as it's brewed, You've got to try and put yourself in that position of, I mean not many people get to go to, up to the Arctic, but you've got to try and put yourself in that position with this drink in your hand. Even, even I live in an old terrace house. Let me show you one second. I think this is very important. This kitchen here, let me just turn this camera. This kitchen here the sun sets there, even in the height of summer. So this window here is the only light we have. So it never sees the sun. You can imagine how cold this house gets in the winter. Look at the thickness of the walls. It's an old terraced house, it's 125 years old. That's gotta be about 15 inches of wall there. And it's solid stone. There's no cavity gotta get this right now there's no cavity to the wall it's built how castles used to be so the moment you put on this tiny little radiator I got here it's seeping through the walls the cold the, the, the warm air is just going and it's coming through this drafty back door so I'm gonna imagine myself because this is the coldest room of the house I can imagine my it's, it's a great beer store. Don't get me wrong. I'm not arguing. I'm not. I'm not complaining. It's a great, great beer store. No, no sunlight and, and very cold. Awesome. But if I'm cooking out here, or if I'm doing the dishes, or if I'm uh, cleaning out here, it's, it's in the middle of the winter. It's bitter cold. I'm imagining myself now with a bottle of this Arctic Global Warmer. And <laughs> I'll sit out here and do dishes all day. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to drink it all because um, I'll probably be flat on my back after a 15% beer. I will sip it all night though. 
And if you comment on this, on the video, I'll be able to give you my final thoughts after I've drunk the lot while I'm uploading this video to YouTube. So you make sure you comment. Tell me if you've ever had uh, an Imperial Stout around the 15% mark and what you thought of it. I'm not overly keen on licorice, so I feel I've got to give it a review. I've got to give it a rating. But unfortunately, I'm going to give it a rating on a plus and a minus. The plus size is obviously this drink is going to, if you've got no central heating in your house, with the price of gas and electricity going up all the time, you want something to warm you up. Bingo. You've got it. On the downside, I don't really like licorice, so I'm probably going to struggle with this all evening. The drink is predominantly licorice. I haven't run, I've been going on for 11 minutes now. I, I really need to read out the back of the, the bottle. A dark imperial stout as was brewed for Arctic expeditions. Rich, malty and warming. Didn't really get the malt even because it was so licorice -y. This Cotswold farm brewed real ale is traditionally brewed using our own blend of finest malts with hops, water, yeast and nothing else. Final fermentation took place in this bottle to create for you the serious beer drinker this truly unique handcrafted beer. Serve lightly chilled. I have done. This is a bottle conditioned beer. Pour gently to, to avoid disturbing the natural sediment. Alcohol 15% by volume. Now, website. Website, website. There's not even a website, but I imagine it's Cotswold Farm Brewed or Brewery.com or Cotswold Farm. Dot com. Check them out. I have to, it's been going on a long time now, so time for a rating. For me, if I was freezing cold, if I was in the Arctic, um, you have to put this beer in its place. I'm in that right place right now with my mind. I'm going to go fantastic beer, 8%. 8%? 8 out of 10. Unfortunately, I don't like licorice, so I've tried to take out the whole licorice part of the drink to be able to give it an 8 out of 10 because it is still a fantastically brewed beer. If you ask me to review this beer and say um, you've got to review it with the licorice, then I'm going to say I don't like licorice at all, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. The licorice masks the alcohol. That's what's going on here with this drink. 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching. If you want to email me, it's realalguide at googlemail.com. Facebook is www.facebook.com forward slash realalcraftbeer. And Twitter is www.twitter.com forward slash realaltoday. I love your comments. Always come back to YouTube first. Always and I'll always answer the comments. Subscribe if you like and cheers.